Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of You've Got Issues. I'm your host, Iria Aysian, and this is the show where you send in your questions and with the help of my lovely guests, we give you tips and advice. We're not experts, but remember, two heads are better than one, or in this case, three. Today we're going to be talking about fashion styling and image making and I'm so excited for the two guests that I have with me. So I have Madame Modish who is a style consultant at Fierce and Modish. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how you got into fashion and style consulting? Um, I wouldn't say I got into fashion. I feel like fashion got into me from like when I was in my mother's womb. Wow. So I've always been you know, careful about what I wear and, you know, how people see me, what I, you know, how I'm perceived when I'm out there. And, you know, it's fashion has always been style, I'd say, has always been sort of like a part of me. Mm -hmm. I started professionally in 2013, so it's going to be five years. Wow. I've been running that company called Fierce and Modish Limited and I'm, you know, did it three years abroad before I moved back to Nigeria. So it's been eight years altogether. I just literally knew that it was time for me to make a career out of my passion. There was nothing else that could give me that joy and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So I literally just left everything else and started it. Wow, wonderful. I also have with me an industry favorite, Tosin Ugunda Degwe, who is a stylist popularly known as the Star Infidel. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jane. So good to be here again. Good to have you. Um, Thank so you. just tell us a little bit about this, this, this title, the Star Infidel. How did okay. you come up with that? Uh, where do I start from? Being a lover of Sex and the City, there was a part where Carrie Bradshaw was saying she had been cheating on funny, no, on fashion with furniture and I'm like, mm, <laughs> that's very infidel-like mm -hmm. and I liked that idea because if you think Carrie, you think fashion Yeah. and I thought, okay, the style infidel, mm, okay, I'm not loyal to any trend, I'm not loyal to any rules. popular culture, no rules, I just do what I, what I love to do, mm -hmm. what I find pleasure doing, I interpret fashion my own way. So and that has become a part of me. I don't do I don't do the norm. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so, very much. There's a lot of people out there that are very passionate about getting into the industry. So a few questions have been sent in today. So I hope you guys are ready to help me sure. answer some sure. of these questions because I'm yeah. no fashion expert. So let's, <laughs> let's hear our first question for the day from the board. I want to be a creative stylist in Nigeria, but I'm finding it very hard getting recognized in the industry. Everyone wants to go for big names. I know most of them have impressive portfolios and influence, but I want to be given a chance. Any advice? So, very common, a lot of people feel like everybody has their favorite stylist or even with makeup and whatever it is, you know, people just feel like it's harder for newbies to break in. So what advice would you give this person? Starting with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so whoever you are out there, I feel like you need to pay your dues to be ready to assist on sets. Um, I assisted on sets for about six months when I started my company in 2013. I worked on you know numerous projects with people as assistant stylists, and I would see that you know the clients would come to me in secret and tell me to give them their numbers. Now. I wasn't proud of the fact that, you know, they, they had left my bosses who hired me and then came to me. But I feel like every client or a potential client would know when, you know, there's fire they in you. No talent. matter who you are or, you know, because I, I, I've never been a socialite or a party going person or anything. So it's always my work. Oh, I saw this somewhere and I, you know, I read it and I realized it was you. So be ready to pay your dues. Be ready to assist. We're very, we're very, especially the 90s kids. They're very, you know, I don't want to learn. I don't want to, it, I can't do it I'm myself. a 90s kid. That's <laughs> I find that offensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like there's some, you know, there's some young people who feel like feel they don't need it. Yeah. 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 But trust me, you need to learn. You need to, I'm still learning under people. You know, I follow the big names internationally and I watch what they do. Do, I see what they talk about so be ready to pay your dues assist be behind the scenes for now to learn soak in everything like a sponge on the set mm -hmm. everything and then you know one year two years you become a big gun as well hopefully you're good at what you do as well because it's not enough to have the attitude if you don't have the skill you know they won't call you back but the attitude and the skill you're good true okay Fabulous. Um, okay for me I where do I start from you like um, Madam Modish said, you need to pay your dues, and it is very, very important. 
I started out as an intern. I've been an intern, been an assistant. I interned during the, rice, the first the Rice Fashion Week in Nigeria. Wow. And it was, you won't take it as demeaning, but you just had to do it if you really wanted. <laughs> no, it's the truth. I know. People like, oh, why are you doing this? But man, there's always a bigger picture and you always need to keep yourself focused on the bigger picture. But mm -hmm. the millennial kids, like Madam Modi said, they just want to have it like, Overnight, overnight. overnight. I started 2000 and overnight. 2010. I didn't have a breakthrough until. Oh my God! So she said before me. 2010. <laughs> I didn't have a breakthrough until 2016. Six wow. years of sweat, hard work, being kicked aside, and I'm thankful for where I am today. I'm definitely not where I want to be, but I'm mm -hmm. thankful for where I am today. So you need to go through that process. It's mm -hmm. a process. Find a stylist to admire their aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Intern with them. As 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 time goes on, you rise with them. Mm. And then, as she said, if people see what, if people are really inspired by what you do personally, definitely they'll reach out to you. So it's a process, wow. and you can't skip that process. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I you agree. crash. I completely agree. So, guys, wow, you've heard from some of the best players in the industry. I definitely agree with what you guys have said. The only thing that I'll add to it is, you know, assisting and um, assisting and just basically following yes. what people are doing. Paying your dues is very important. And there's something else I've realized is. There are different roads in the market, right? So another thing you can do is if people are not booking you for jobs, I mean, you can find a friend that you're close to and maybe style that person mm -hmm. or reach out yes. to somebody that mm -hmm. you want to use as a yes. means. Mm -hmm. Now, if that person is constantly being styled by you and maybe it catches traction because a lot of people are using social media this day, these days to cheat the, yes. the what do you call it, the Pers system. Mm -hmm. Exactly. True. So if you're really good at what you do, I think that it will definitely pick up traction. So that's just like one other piece of advice I can give. And then free in. work as well. Like exactly. people say, oh no, I can't work for free. I've never worked for free, mm -hmm. but I've done, you know, I've done things that I needed to do when I needed to do them. So if, mm. if I was, when I assisted on the set of Project Fame, I never got paid. The, the head stylist said to me, I would pay you for transport, if nothing else. Because she knew me when I was working 95 and she knew how much I was earning. Mm -hmm. So in her head, she was like, ah, Dami will come and sit down here all day and I won't pay anything. Even if it's, I said, Jane, yeah, don't worry. I'm good. Let me just see how this thing works. Let me see the brand man. Mm -hmm. The brand managers in the room assessing the outfits, the contestants. Like sure. for me, it was, this is real. Like I was good. So be ready to do free work. Be ready to, you know, skip all those five, five Ks. It's not, it's okay. Learn. Learn. And I, I think that, that free work thing is actually very important as well. Cause even yes. though I've kind of worked in my field since 2006, wow. I've always done like for punch yes, newspapers yes. i've always just written or tried to build skill in some way on the side you know until i got to the point that i was like okay now i think i can be in front of a camera mm -hmm. without people crying it, when they see me it, present it's actually very important that you like i'd always say you need to pay your dues it is yeah. very important you build your books by doing i don't want to use the word free works but there are ways by which you can by building build your, your skill you're building your skills you're learning through through the entire process of course you're learning through all that process and if you keep saying oh i can't do anything for free i can't it's like saying i don't want to invest in myself at mm -hmm. the end of the day exactly True. absolutely guys we have to take our second question now for the day so let's hear it from the board hello i had an issue with one of my clients whereby i did not meet up to her expectations in terms of styling i thought she looked perfect but to the public she didn't now i have lost my clients and people are currently insulting me please how can i move forward from this situation okay so this is a very common problem being so in love with your work that you know before you submit <laughs> i say submit your <laughs> your product to the public you know you don't check it properly i'm, I'm sure a few people would have said what is, what is this? Change this. And you're like, no, 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 no. I'm sure this is the right dress. I'm sure these are the right accessories. I know you guys have been through this kind of yep. ordeals before. So starting with you, <laughs> so soon. <laughs> Please take the floor. Okay. Um, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. And learning how to deal with it is very important. Uh, also, sometimes it's good when you go with your guts and you take the blame for it. Mm -hmm. If at the end of the day, you go with whatever anybody tells you, you're not, you don't have a mind of your own. Yeah. So when things like that happen, apologize to the client. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But the most important thing is you went with your guts and you flopped and you're learning through it. It is always important you take that lesson and you learn through it. Mm -hmm. It happens. You can't win all the time. You win some, you lose some. It's fine. Madame Modish. Um, so five words. <laughs> she is not your client. Mm. Like Word. You cannot lose your client because of the public's public. opinion i fired a client before on twitter 
because of this thing. Like I, I tweeted, I'm done. And she called me and said, Dami, I saw a tweet. I said, yes, it's for you. And that was the end of the, the mm -hmm. business arrangement. Because mm -hmm. I just felt we've sat down, maybe mm -hmm. because I'm very thorough with my styling. I'm not a, oh, hi, AC, I have a client. What do you have? Yeah. They send mm -hmm. pictures. I just grab one and I, I'm not that stylist. Mm -hmm. Normally, I, you know, I strategize. There's a mood board. There's a color palette for the month mm -hmm. based on cosmopolitan trends that are outside of Nigeria so I'm not going to go and pull one collection that I don't know what inspired it mm -hmm. what fabric Word. texture works for it what color yeah so I'm more thorough with my work so we we have sat down to check your to do your brand Bible mm -hmm. we know what you want to look like but so why was we, the client fired like is it that the client agreed with you at first and then later thought they didn't public look nice? opinion so she said that her friend who is a designer mm -hmm. said she could make a better dress of course your friend will say she can because she's upset that we're patronizing another, another designer. designer and i was fine with the friend making dresses but i didn't want a monotonous style now the difference between a designer and a stylist is the designer is building their brand a stylist is bu building the client's brand yep so regardless of who makes what, we don't and even care. If the, even if the stylist is building their own brand as well the point is that they're trying out different things of course they we don't not, care yeah. who made what is Idia looking good today? Even if it's a tailor down the road, nobody cares though. Like, that's how you find Beyonce using stylists who are like two years old in the industry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Ty Tyrone has done his work, but trust me, anybody can design anything. So, she's not your client. So, if such things happen and, you know, you felt you aced it, it happens all the time. And then, you know, bad picture, bad lighting, bad posture, because all that is part of styling. Yeah. If I make a nice dress and you stand, like I had that problem all the time with one of my clients as well. You know, she's big breasted, so when she stands on, on the red carpet, she, she doesn't that angle dress, her uh, well you know. herself properly. But in a few months, we got it right. She didn't fire me. She didn't think that because people said, oh, you look funny. So I feel like you should be your client's, I won't say friend, but like be, enter your client. Yes. Understand your Do you client. understand? Let's get to the point where your client to say, even when your clients may be mad she's like no 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 she killed it then behind closed doors they can see her perfect that may yes. think next one we perfect. should not try that color that's your client yep because mm -hmm. it, it's you know rihanna's had a client a, a stylist for 12 years there's been good pictures that's been been bad, bad pictures, but yes. we all think he's the best because she thinks he's the best so yeah wait for your clients they'll come i think even away from that even with designers generally because i get to work with a lot of designers and there are times when you shoot their lookbooks and Mm -hmm. one minute I, as much as possible i would always tell you okay this is what we're doing this season this is what photographer we're working with this is what model we're working with this is what makeup artist we're working with if at the end of the day the client tells you no i have my blah 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 and everything goes yeah off the books you're not responsible That's but even responsible. when because some clients genuinely don't listen mm -hmm. and then you very, can't beat them up you can't beat them up for that <laughs> you can't, can't beat them up for that. but like she said oh, yeah, she know, is right? not your client move to the next one if the person was your client the person would just call you close to and um, call you behind us and tell you okay you know what next time we're not yeah. trying this we're not working with this photographer we're not working with this model and you guys move on from there you know i've never had a like a, an outfit that flopped but <laughs> <I've> <laughs> had, <laughs> but we have discussed on my on on star 101 and we've asked this question before when an outfit does not look nice who takes the blame the photographer the stylist the makeup artist hair who is to blame entire entire yeah. glass squad yes <laughs> the team because Everybody. you had about five eyes actually, yes. and nobody saw it actually Everybody. it's happened to my clients because the photographers blame the, the, the celebrities, <laughs> the celebrities, celebrities clients, blame well. their stylist yes, stylist blame the makeup artist makeup artist blame the hair person she literally got on the stage and got booed out of the stage and according to her <laughs> the stylist the makeup artist the <laughs> photographer everyone said great because she stepped out Damn. so she said you know what she called her parents they said, might not have liked done her. everybody is fired. fired and that's how wow. i got hired she was wow. crying because she had to cancel all her shows for that month because they had because they had booed her down like she wasn't going to wow. show up anywhere else. she said that me i cleared my team so it's the team oh. wow that's why sometimes yeah. photographers say you can't say that i even had that on my last editorial shoot oh, i wow. said the dress is blowing the, the fan is blowing the dress in the middle of the legs of the model. Mm -hmm. So it's looking like a jumpsuit. Yeah, okay. And it's not a jumpsuit. So we need to turn off that fan mm -hmm. so that it looks like a dress. A dress. And it is. He yeah. said, no, it's not for me to say. I said, no, we are going to fight here. 
Because guess what? When the picture they goes out, they will say stylist. Say stylist. stylist. <laughs> it's a stylist. Okay, guys. Okay, we have to take a quick break now. But don't forget that you guys can join the conversation online by sending a message to YGI at myspice.tv. You can also hashtag YGI on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You've got issues. We'll be back after the break with more on fashion and styling. Hello guys and welcome back to You've Got Issues. We're talking about everything fashion and styling today. And I'm still here with Madame Modish and the Star Infidel. It's time to take our third question for the day. So let's hear it from the board. I landed a big client a few months ago and I thought I had finally gotten my breakthrough in the industry. The client had a styling budget of 100,000 Naira for a TV series, which I thought was quite ridiculous for the whole cast. I expressed this, but I still went out of my way to make things happen with the promise of getting my money back. It has been months now and I haven't gotten my money. Please, what should I do? So this person okay. went and spent money apparently okay. to style. I don't think you spent, don't you just pull? Do no. you have to pay for anything? TV series production is different from photo shoots. Yep. So, so you need to, production is a different ball game. Wow. I didn't know that as well until I started doing production work. So you take the clothes for longer. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know the time, the staff, the logistics, the heat, the demands. It's yep. a lot. So you need to. Okay. So, hundred k for a TV series is impossible. You said they should do free work. <laughs> free work is not basic work. <laughs> True. You need to be right. guided. Like yes. the job needs to be able to pay for itself. Yeah, that's why I say to my clients, even if I'm not making money, the job needs. I can't. You be can't spend your own money. Yes. Got it. Okay. Death. Thanks for clarifying yeah. that. And then, you know, I have a problem with the first line as well. I I landed a big client. There's no big client to. The big client is the person that pays you the big moolah. Yeah, but this, this, there really no one that pays you the big money. All I'm saying is you don't call somebody big. You know what I mean? Because you. you'll be shocked when you get into the team and realize that a lot of it is just smoke screen. People Smokes and flash mirrors. things on Instagram, yep. but it doesn't really equal to their pocket. So Except just me. say no to stuff that... <laughs> <laughs> so <I got laughs> say not the stuff that's going to land you in debt. I'm speaking from a personal point of view, like, and then don't do anything based on verbal promises. Mm -hmm. Have contracts signed, because you may need to go to court. When I had when when I had a lawyer, when I started my business, I thought she was just going to do tax and you know sit at meetings. I found myself writing counter and, yeah. counter counter like claims. We're going and to go to trial. In this industry for a big film that i styled because i ran into debt so you need to be for production work it's a different ball game because so how, what should she do now <laughs> yeah now i mean you can't because what will happen is the client goes and tells people oh no you know she's this she's that you're not there to stand up for yourself true so try to reduce the risk because you won't be there to fight for yourself and what goes around then they start thinking you're the bad person it never gets you can't see you can't get there are people owing me to you can't get your money again really you can't fight you can't fight if there's no paperwork you <coughs> can't do anything even oh. when there's paperwork there's a limit to because we're in a business of perception mm -hmm. we're supposed to to so the big clients will win anyway yeah because imagine so a brand is there where there's all go. controversy <laughs> just let it go nobody <laughs> nobody go taught me that sometimes just it's Did okay it. take the learnings so now if i'm going to production i already know and i'll tell you at the meeting it's not going to work get another stylist it will work i can do this so at this point i think you should just you know be happy and move to the next thing because you may not get the money back. Okay. Tosin. Paper, paperwork. Like I said earlier, you win some, you lose some. You learn through the process. So you should take, he or she count this one as a loss? Take it as a loss. And then next time you do your paperwork and stand by it. If it's not going to work, you just let the client know, sorry, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I can, I can make do whatever budget you have. It's ridiculous that people would offer that amount. I understand the part of wanting to do something and being a part of a big project and everything. If at the end of the day, you run at a loss and run into debt, please run. Personal experience, run for your life. Mm. Run for the hills. 
it's the truth like you need no it's the truth because person, what will go around what will go around and tell they, will tell, they won't tell them how much they paid no, you they just say oh she, she's a very he's a very messed up stylist very he's very responsible he doesn't blah 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 so rather than go through all that mess why not just protect yourself and learn to say you no know, you can't get all the gigs you can't get all the gigs. Honestly, I have to agree with my guests on one aspect, but I, I think I disagree that they should count it as a loss. For some people, 100k may not be something that they can let go of. So start with the polite email and see how that goes. But I would try one more time. If you've already sent an email, then you might want to count it as a loss. The one thing with me, the rule that I have is if I'm going to do a job for free, I'm usually going to do that job for free for a client that I know does not have the money and it has to be a job that is in line with my goals and my portfolio. So if I, if I want to do something beauty and it's a beauty brand and it's okay, that makes sense. So if it's something that is not really going to help you and it's just somebody making promises, verbal agreements and no, it doesn't make any sense. Anyways, um, it's time to take our next question for the day. So let's hear it from the board. How can I successfully carve a niche with fashion styling in Nigeria? There are a lot of stylists out there who literally do the same thing. Do you have any suggestions on how to stand out? Uh, finding your inner voice, finding your inner aesthetic. It is very, very important. There are stylists that know how to do clean, minimal, mm. perfectly. There are stylists that know how to go Chaos. over the top. Perfectly. There are stylists that know how to play on grunge, that know how to just find an aesthetic for yourself that works. Stylists that know how to play on trends yes, and there, what's, there are tons of styles. You just need to find your voice and find your inner aesthetic that the minute someone sees a job and oh nah, this is Chelsea, mm -hmm. this is Madame Modish. I know mm -hmm. who will do this. Mm -hmm. So it's always very key that you find your inner voice and do things differently from how every other person would is easily present their work. But the but but I feel like part of the question they're asking is how do they find that distinction and i think what i always think of in terms of like finding a unique selling point is why you wanted to do it in the first place so when you thought of being a stylist what was what were, were the sort of ideas that you wanted to see on a person like when you want it, for instance if i want to be a tv presenter yeah. what industry did i see myself working in is it comedy is it sports is it you know what i mean like Which? what what specifically are you interested yeah. in about styling maybe you can use that to which, for, for me as a person, it's a lot deeper. Mm. It's a lot deeper because um, my mates graduated from uni in 2008. I didn't mm -hmm. graduate until 2012. Wow. So it was a lot of pain. So what were you doing? I just had to keep staying back in school doing logic. Wow. And the lecturer kept failing me. Mm, so it was a lot of pain, a lot of frustration. And I really put all of that into my work. Okay. Personal okay. editorials and everything, you would see it. If you take a deeper look at it. It's born out of that inner pain. Mm. My aesthetic it's an is expression born. Of yes, you. it's an exp like she said. It's an expression of you. It's born from that very deep place. Mm. So there is no way. There's, it's not just oh, let me wear yellow dress and put on blue shoe and do color. Mm. Nope. There has to be that inner message you're passing across. Mm -hmm. So that's why. That's what I'm saying. The whatever it is that it's you're trying to express. Yes. 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 Okay, Madam Modish. Mine will be two words: creativity and consistency. So Nigeria is a very bandwagon environment. So yep. everyone wants to look like Rihanna. Everyone wants to look like Kim. Because they're fabulous. It's not, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, those women have like strong personalities that you don't see that they've built over the years, mm -hmm. and you're not them. You probably have yep. you know, self-esteem issues. You know, you, you, <laughs> you're trying to bleach your skin. She just attacked a whole know. country self-esteem. So you're just, I'm, I'm talking about your potential clients, my yeah, dear yeah, yeah, yeah. young stylists. Those are your potential clients. They have in a, well, like priests. Yeah. We deal with a lot yeah. behind the scenes. Bring people will share. People will <laughs> share with you their deep insecurities, and they look to you to keep Six. them yes. hundred. So creativity is, you know, read. I like. I spend so much time reading fashion material that my clients make fun of me all the time. Read. Invest yourself. Stop checking pictures like irrelevant pictures read business or fashion articles read like yep. you know go through to pinterest there's so many sites i don't even know that pinterest exists about lines you know what i mean like symmetry yep. think yourself so you, you you sleep and you see what you want your clients to look like and consistency is make sure you don't deviate because of a trendy client i've had to throw away a trendy client because i knew i wasn't a trendy stylist you have to make the sacrifices. So creativity and consistency, regardless of what. Yep. Let people see. I've, I've had people, you know, clients on stage and people send me a message. This is you. Like, I would die if it's not you. 
and I'm like, yeah, it's me. That is your aim. Like, that's why you... People think. should know. Once they think it's tossing, no, it's, it's damning, then... So creativity and consistency yep. are the two keys to finding that niche, you know, and keep hammering it. That's why I turned my name to, you know, I have the, and have these hashtags, you know, every time. Yes. So there was a time I had, you know, no basic zone. Then I moved on to, you know, the alternative dresser. So now if you hashtag, if you check the hashtag on Instagram, it's only my work because I know that we're different. Like, so and my clients for loose storms, they're alternative people. Find your, find your client, they're, they're niche. It's not everyone. When you see them, you know True. they're boho, they're different, they're deep, they you know they they're strong. They, so just creativity and consistency, and you'll be you'll be fine. Thank you guys so much for all the questions that you've sent in. We wouldn't have a show without you. And thank you, Tosin and Madame Modish, for being here thank today. You so thank much for you. Having we us. hope to have you again on the show because this was a very insightful episode. Thank you. You guys will be here same time and same place next week on You've Got Issues, so you better tune in.